Long ago, fish were plentiful. The main challenge we saw was how to maximize production. But today, things have changed. Our marine resources are under increased strain. Overfishing, climate change, habitat degradation, land and sea pollution, and competing uses of our seas and waterways are too often threatening the rich diversity and abundance of life in aquatic systems. Furthermore, a population expected to reach nearly 10 billion people by 2050 is increasingly reliant on fish for employment, livelihoods and as part of healthy and nutritious diets. How can we meet these challenges? How can we ensure that our policies and individual actions balance use with the need to conserve the rich biodiversity of our marine environment? We can't feed people without looking after the fish. How can we best do this? In order to effectively look after the fish, we need to know more about them. Their health, their numbers and size, their homes. Knowing how this information changes through time is crucial for understanding what fish need to thrive. We need to know which fish stocks are resilient, which require rebuilding efforts, and which are in danger and how our activities are driving changes in their resilience. When we implement measures to manage fishing pressures, we need an accurate picture on the effectiveness of our efforts, the response of fish and the related ecosystems. This will help us to adapt our behaviours based on changes in the natural world. Where effective efforts to conserve and sustainably use fish stocks are in place, ideally with fisherfolk at the helm as resource custodians, how do we share this information to scale the results and the positive effects on fish? How can we stimulate the spread of good ideas to inform governance structures and communities on how to better care for the fish? Part of looking after the fish is looking after their home. Many marine and freshwater ecosystems are suffering degradation. We must concentrate efforts on reversing damage and supporting nature in rebuilding these vibrant marine ecosystems. Marine pollution, including plastic pollution, has increased at worrying rates in recent years. It's not just about their homes but also about what happens to them there. Overfishing and illegal fishing are taking their toll on fish stocks. We need a full understanding of the damage and we must ensure international support to implement instruments and measures already in place to end these practices and strengthen fisheries management plans. How can we better understand not just the fish but the state of marine ecosystems as a whole, to better care for the fish and ensure sustainable use. To best look after the fish, we must coordinate our efforts globally. We need all hands on deck to achieve real change. We're heading in the right direction. We now have the key instruments, measures and global fora in place. Through close collaboration across sectors and with those who fish in oceans and fresh water, we can improve ocean governance and, ultimately, the health of our fish. This challenge isn't as daunting as it appears. A global network of regional fisheries management organisations and regional fisheries bodies is already in place to collaborate internationally to strengthen sustainable fisheries management, both in our oceans and inland waters. We need to put an end to criminal activity that hampers these efforts. Illegal, unreported and unregulated IUU fishing that is thought to represent 20% of total catches. Since 2016, an international treaty 
the FAO Port State Measures Agreement is ensuring illegally caught fish never enters markets through international ports. This and other international measures help guarantee sea to plate traceability so that we can identify and stamp out illegal activity across the market chain. But we can't ever forget about all those who depend on fish for their food and livelihoods. Small-scale fisheries communities make up 90% of the world's capture fishers and fish workers. The Voluntary Guidelines for Securing Sustainable Small-Scale Fisheries is the first internationally agreed instrument aimed at supporting and strengthening this vital community. And we must not forget that people are an integral part of the ecosystem, so we need to manage our oceans as one. We need to continue to innovate our understanding in response to the changing world around us. In coastal waters and beyond national jurisdictions, we need to keep asking the questions to help us enhance and implement the ecosystem approach to fisheries management in line with the globally agreed FAO Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries. How we act today will determine how we achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. There are many challenges before us, but with oceans high on the international political agenda, there's never been a better time.